In Tetralogy of Fallot with pulmonary atresia, the paths that the blood normally travels to get oxygen have gotten a little scrambled during fetal development, and blood has to take a different pathway to reach the lungs. In this part of the graphic, you'll get to see what the condition looks like and why it impairs circulation. In tetralogy patients, the muscle wall that separates the two sides of the heart doesn't form properly, which leaves a hole between the ventricles. We call that a ventricular septal defect, or VSD. The VSD allows blue blood to escape from the right side of the heart to the left, where some of it gets pumped out to the body without ever going to the lungs to be oxygenated. A patient whose tissues are getting oxygen-poor blood may have bluish skin or fingernails. The abnormal blood flow also means that parts of the heart don't develop as well as they should. One of those parts is the pulmonary valve, the door through which blood normally leaves the heart on its way to the lungs. But in pulmonary atresia, the pulmonary valve is completely blocked and the pulmonary artery never fully develops. That means blue, deoxygenated blood is forced to find a different path to the lungs. In these patients, blue blood reaches the lungs through extra vessels that branch off of the aorta. Every human embryo develops these vessels, called collateral arteries. As the fetus grows, the vessels are normally replaced by the pulmonary arteries. But here, the pulmonary arteries are blocked, so the body keeps the collaterals long past the embryonic stage. They're the only way that blue blood can flow from the heart to the lungs which is why collaterals are critical to the surgical repair process you'll see in the final section. With the pulmonary valve blocked, the right ventricle has to work extra hard to pump oxygen, poor blood, the long way, through the VSD and into the aorta. The extra work causes the muscle in the right ventricle to become enlarged or hypertrophied. The aorta is also a little out of position. It points too far toward the right side of the heart. When we repair the heart, we want to make sure it's better aligned with the left ventricle, the chamber from which it normally receives oxygenated blood on its way out to the body.